It does not get much more embarrassing than what the New York Knicks fan base has done to the Sixers' entire organization. Not only has the team hopped up to a 3-1 series lead on the court, but the Knicks faithful have let us know all about it. Now, I'll start by saying, and I mean this as a compliment, that I think Philadelphia and New York fans truly are the top two most obnoxious fan bases in all of sports, and that is a little game recognizes game moment here that I think you have every right to run whatever victory lap that you want to. And frankly, I fully expect that in the comments and everything else that you guys have to go from the New York side of things. But I do want to acknowledge just some of the activity going on in the stadium that it has been four straight Nick Ho- Nick's homes games to start this series. And that's massively disappointing from the Sixers side of things that there were MVP chance for Jalen Brunson at the free throw line, not the guy who's the actual MVP of this league, the guy that is carrying the Sixers franchise. And Joel spoke a little bit that that after the game as well. But to dive into some of the clips, I mean, we're talking about. Knicks fans putting jerseys on the Wilt statue. We're talking about them taking over the concourse with this sort of chant. And as I mentioned, the MVP chance for Jalen Brunson at the free throw line. It's a tough look for Philadelphia. Now, I don't need to get into economics of why this is the case. That personally, when checking ticket prices, it's about double the price for the games of the Garden. It's only, you know, an hour and a half difference for them to travel down here. And we know that the the way of the world, that there isn't quite this royalty or loyalty to the Sixers team when you think about what is the expectation and what has been given over the year. That I don't. I won't get mad at the fans who make the calculus of I'd rather put an extra couple extra couple hundred dollars in my pocket and watch this game from my couch at home rather than make the trip and go through the process only to ultimately be let down as was the current case. Now, as I mentioned, Joel Embiid did speak when asked about it post game and had a quote here that he said, "quote It kind of pisses me off, especially because Philly is considered a sports town. They've always showed up. I didn't think that could happen. It's not okay." I agree with Joel here, and people are running with this quote making this a bigger deal than it needs to be. I mean, the bottom line is, what do you want the guy to say there? Would you rather him reply with something like, oh, no, I loved having mostly Knicks fans in in our home facility. It was great. Like, there's no, it's a lose-lose kind of question for him. There's no way he can answer it, and I honestly have zero issue with what he did say. That I do think Embiid, to his credit, like, this isn't something that bothers him particularly. If anything, he likes playing the villain more so than, than it had anything, so it is a little bit of a benefit there. But the bottom line is, it is still embarrassing that from a Philadelphia fan perspective, from a fan base that prides themselves among being one of the most passionate sports fan bases on the planet, you did not show up for this game. Now, luckily, our savior Meek Mill has already chimed in here, and I did want to pull this up here, him tweeting, have people acting like they're turning on Joel, trust the process, wins and losses. I'm coming to the next Knicks game. We got a rep like they did. The whole whole arena was half Knicks fans. Let's play our part. No blame game. <laughs> no blame game. Get you a chip. I don't know if we're one Meek Mill cheer away from the Sixers team turning this series around, but I'll try anything at this point. And I do re- respect the passion out of Meek there. But again, these are issues that lie beyond the fans when we're talking about the actual game itself. That when talking about the game specifically, the box score here, of course, the next winning at 97-92 victory. Tobias Harris here, man. 10 points, 8 rebounds in 34 minutes. Looked it up before this. He's the 19th highest paid player in the NBA. The 19th highest paid player in the NBA is essentially running cardio as a fourth option on the Sixers team right now. That, of course, being Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Kelly Oubre, each ahead of him in the pecking order, and deservingly so. But I don't want to make this a Tobias Harris slander video. I did want to talk a little more about the Knicks side of things that... Throughout this series, and again, I do have a respect here that this is a game-recognized game from the obnoxious standpoint, you're much more different than Philadelphia fans that I expected. And what I mean from that, we're both boisterous, in each other's faces, a little disrespectful, all those things. I like that out of a fan base. But when it is in Philadelphia, it's like we celebrate the moment because we know it's going south, that we're just waiting for that shoe to drop for the bad thing to happen. For New York, you give them an inch, they are running victory laps forever, that starting with burning Joel Embiid jerseys after game one. We're talking them throwing full-on championship-level parades outside the stadium after every single victory. It is a little much. But again, I do respect the passion here. And what I guess I can even... I don't even know if respect's the right word here, but what I think is funny about it is the Knicks have even less room to talk than the Sixers do from a franchise success period. If you want to talk about what have you done with me lately... Taking a look at the Knicks playoff history, when's the last time you guys have made it out of the second round? And you know when? 1999 and 2000, which was longer ago than the Sixers, who of course went to the finals in 2001 here. 
So a lot of chirping for not a lot of substance there. And this all goes during the time frame where the Sixers have literally lived through their process when their goal was to lose basketball games. You guys were just doing it unintentionally. So it is pretty wild to see kind of the chest puffing and the, the bragging from all of New York's faithful. But once again, you have every right to. that They have absolutely been the more determined, the more, frankly, fun-to-watch team in this series. That the way that they have brought it, the way they compete as a team, you have to respect from an opponent's standpoint. But it doesn't make it all the better that it is happening in this building. And to now acknowledge the final part here from the Sixer side of things, I do think that there should be a real deal look in the mirror moment from the ownership as a whole. That think about how ride or die the Philadelphia fan base is, and think about how this is a team that should have legitimate title aspirations, and fans aren't itching to get in their seats for a playoff run. That this wasn't a situation in which like like Knicks fans bought their tickets and got in there fair and square. Why is there not the demand from the Philadelphia side of things to make that different? And I do spe- think that speaks to how many times the Sixers team has come off short and how that is finally starting to stick with people in their belief. Now, that's not happening in a Phillies game. That's not happening in an Eagles game. It is the Sixers team because people don't trust them. And every year, they gave us more reason why that is not the case. Now, again, to paint a little bit of a positive outlook here, I do think we got our hopes up a little more, and myself included. I was at the forefront of this. That, frankly, this roster has not had enough time to gel. When you think about Kyle Lowry coming here during Joel Embiid's absence while he was out with a knee injury, that they barely got to play together in the regular season before now trying to figure out on the playoff run. When you look at the way the offense functions right now, it is night and day worse than it was at the start of the year when there was more movement. There was guys on the same page. And when you have a player as ball dominant, as important, and just as talented as Joel Embiid trying to reintroduce him to a lineup, a ton of changes need to be made. And I don't think there was quite enough time to get all that down, and we're seeing that. And the margins are so small that the greater issue here is you see the weaknesses in this team, not being able to get the big-time rebounds, not having the supporting cast capable of stepping up where you need Joel Embiid to score 50 points just to have a chance to win. It's frustrating. It's year in and year out. And we are going to have a larger Joel Embiid conversation in the coming months on this channel and coming weeks on this channel. For now, it is still 3-1. I still don't want to fully close the door on this series until it gets slammed in our face, which very well could be in the next game. I also will note my final point on this is I still think there's a world where the Sixers can close out this series in an effective way without winning and it not to be a a massive deal. That I do want to see them win at least one more game. I do want to see this team not pack it in and quit. It's less about what the actual results are and more about the process of getting there. But if this is a competitive game, a, a matchup in which the Sixers team brings it, they show me something from a mentality standpoint. I do think that's something that you can build on in the long run. Now, no matter how how, I, how you slice this, the Sixers are still coming up short here. That is looking unlikely they're making it past the first round unless they win three consecutive games against a team that it's been difficult. It's frustrating. It hurts to swallow, and the Knicks fans are the better because of it. They're enjoying every bit of this, and I will tip my hat and let them have the rest of their their victory lap from here. But I do hope this is a lesson to the Sixers moving forward, that there should be a bit of a look yourself in the mirror and figure out how can we get people to believe in this team again. And Sixers fans, show up next time, that I would much rather there be a Sixers fans, just fan base in full force, this is a fan base that should be taking over opposing opposing stadiums, not having their own taken out from under them. So embarrassing stuff all around. The bottom line, the team proved that why they are deserving of that treatment. So we'll see what happens from here. Once again, there is still a series to be played out. We will see what happens in Game 5. The Knicks currently with a 3-1 lead. Let me know what you guys have your thoughts in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this as a whole. And feel free to just air out the Victory Laps Knicks fan because I know I got plenty coming in that direction. Appreciate you guys for tuning in once again. Make sure you are smashing that subscribe button to keep the Sixers Digest family growing. Dropping a like and dropping a comment here. And be talking with you next time. Peace.